Menopause Taylor says you don't need blood tests. Heather Hirsch, MD, also here on YouTube, says you do need blood tests. This is actually just tomato sauce, believe it or not. <laughs> Should I try to get it in my mouth? What if it's froth? <laughs> I choked. I choked. I went down. Oh! Well, that just proves it is tomato sauce because I ate it. <laughs> it went down my throat. So, with so many conflicting ideas and advice from doctors on YouTube and in books and doctors in real life, how do you know whether you should go for blood tests or not to tell if you're in perimenopause? Well, I'm in perimenopause. I did go for blood tests. I've been on my perimenopausal journey for quite a few years now. I've done a shit ton of research. This is all the books that I've read on perimenopause. And so I've come to an understanding of why you would need blood tests, why you actually wouldn't need blood tests, when to go for blood tests, when you shouldn't go for blood tests, so that you can make an informed decision with your doctor. Because I'd like to save you time, money, and blood <laughs> unnecessarily if you don't actually need to go for blood tests. So now, you need to understand what perimenopause is, and menopause, of course, and it'll help build the picture of why you would or wouldn't go for blood tests. So of course, perimenopause is the stage before menopause. It can be two years, it can be 10 years. It is the slow <laughs> decline of your hormones as they slowly run out, your sex hormones that is. And when you enter menopause, of course, you're no longer producing eggs, your estrogen runs out. But during perimenopause, what happens is that your progesterone in general drops off first. Then at menopause, you stop ovulating, you stop having a period, and so your estrogen runs almost out, and then later your testosterone drops, although mine has dropped early. But now it's a natural thing that's going to happen to every woman on the planet, and it will happen from the age of 40 onwards for most ladies. Some ladies do have an early perimenopause and menopause, and then, of course, some ladies a little bit later. But the average age of menopause itself is 51, 52. <laughs> so if you are experiencing the symptoms of perimenopause slash menopause, and there are many symptoms, which I'll run through quickly, uh, and I might miss out a few because there are so many, but it's brain fog, it's anxiety, depression, joint aches and pains, irritability and mood swings, um, vaginal dryness, low libido, urinary tract infections, <laughs> weight gain, you could even suffer with acne, hot flashes, night sweats. So those are the main symptoms. I'll put a list on the screen of all of the symptoms and there are many and some of them are really weird like tingling in your extremities. But all of these are heart palpitations. All of these are symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. And so, I will say, if you are over 40 and you're experiencing a few of these symptoms together, you probably don't need blood tests because you know what's happening. You're at the right age, these are the symptoms, they match perimenopause, and so there you go. A blood test will only confirm what your symptoms are showing. But now, <laughs> of course, there are certain things that are very similar to perimenopause, like low thyroid which also has mood swings, joint aches and pains, fatigue. But now low thyroid also goes with its own set of symptoms. So if you're having night sweats, hot flashes, and fatigue, you're probably in perimenopause. But in that case, you would probably test your thyroid just to check and make sure. Now, I'm not saying you can't do blood tests to see if you're in perimenopause. The problem is, as Menopause Taylor does say, it is a snapshot in time and during perimenopause, our hormones are all over the place. They're up and down and up and down and up and down. And some months you ovulate, some months you don't. Some months you may have higher estrogen, some months it might be lower. Some months you might make progesterone and some months you may not. So although you can go for a blood test, it's not going to really tell you a clear picture. Yes, some doctors are very experienced and can look at those blood tests and get a good idea of what's going on. If your progesterone is low and you're testing in the luteal phase, it is probably perimenopause. So that is the blood test I went for. But ultimately, did I need a blood test? No, <laughs> my symptoms are telling me the story. They are telling me I'm in perimenopause. And so I could have saved myself 
the hassle. However, it's neither a good thing nor a bad thing. There's no right or wrong way. And if you have been on the birth control pill and you're in your 50s and now you just want to check, you can stop the birth control pill and then you can check your FSH, which is your follicle stimulating hormone, which rises at menopause. And then you can just confirm if you just want to know, because sometimes you do just want to know. So there's no harm in getting a blood test. But again, there is no need if it's just to tell whether you're in menopause or perimenopause. And as the gynecologist said, and I went to his talk here where I live, he said, it's neither here nor there getting a blood test because we don't treat hormone levels, we treat symptoms. <laughs> so again, if your cluster of symptoms that you are experiencing line up with menopause or perimenopause, that is what you're going to go on. But now I can hear you say, but what if I don't have any symptoms? Well, then you don't need blood tests. <laughs> You're not going to need to go for a blood test because you'll be feeling fine. Why would you need to go on hormones if you're feeling absolutely fine? If you're not feeling fine, then you can go to the doctor, gynecologist, and tell them your symptoms. But again, the time when you would need blood tests is if there is a confusion as to what is really going on. Because maybe some of your symptoms do seem like you've got hypothyroidism or some other illness, some other disease, some other reason, maybe high cortisol, maybe whatever, stress-related, maybe you're ill, then it may be worth just checking your bloods, checking to see what's going on. So I hope this little understanding has helped you decide whether it is worth going for blood tests or not. <laughs> this is the channel for kicking ass over 40. Bye.